Hey guys, let's talk about books. All right, the spoiler is in the title. This is a whole video. I don't think I filmed a whole video for like a year. Don't worry, it's not gonna be the whole year, although that would be an epic video. I just, I'm feeling FOMO watching other people's whole videos. I am constantly buying books. Why not tell you about the books and then I can stay on that book hype train for a little bit longer and maybe in the future, I'll be able to remember why I bought specific books and still haven't touched them. You know how it goes. These are books that I have bought just in this past July, which, you know, keeps it condensed, keeps it small, keeps it manageable. Uh, doesn't look like I'm <laughs> a slave to capitalism. I mean, aren't we all? I've split this up into physical books and then digital books, which is usually Kindle and then audio books and let's just talk about books all right this first one i didn't actually buy it came off my amazon wish list from my biggest fan my mum. so thank you mum, for adding this little baby to my adopted children this is the oxford illustrated history of the book is there a blurb oh what does the um oh <gasps> it's purple in there can you see that that's pretty all right Anyway, we love a hardcover. We never read hardcovers, but we love them. The blurb says, In 14 original essays, the Oxford Illustrated History of the Book reveals the history of books, you'd think, in all their various forms, from the ancient world to the digital present. Leading international scholars offer an original and richly illustrated narrative that is global in scope. Blah, 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 more about book, the history of books. Let's find some of the illustrated history of books. Oh, that's pretty. That's from China. So I just saw the, um, the headings of the chapters. We should go through that, actually. The ancient world, Byzantium, medieval and early modern East Asia, medieval Western Europe, Renaissance and Reformation, managing information. Hmm. The Islamic world, enlightenment and revolution, South Asia, industrialization, modern China, Japan, Korea, globalization and books transformed. I'm interested in managing information. There's no pictures in this section. Oh, you see this? Oh, it's about like indices. Oh. I love it. All right, and the call number, if you're interested on that one, is 002.09 because it's in the history of books. Thanks, Mum. Building a Second Brain by Tiago Forte. I am assuming <laughs> I didn't look that up, did I? Uh, this below, oh, a proven method to organize your digital life and unlock your creative potential. This was talked about a lot on a podcast that I listened to called On the Reg, which is by two Australian academics. And they love the productivity book. And I love the productivity book. So I bought the productivity book. The blurb says, discover the full potential of your ideas and make powerful, meaningful improvements in your work and life by building a second brain. For the first time in history, we have instant access to the world's knowledge. Yet rather than feeling empowered, we're often overwhelmed, believing we'll never know or worse, never remember enough blah 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 put your brain in a digital format i had a quick look at the the chapters and it's set out like every other productivity book you may have read um, i'm not assuming that you will have read them because why <laughs> so it starts out with like the theory behind and then the method the steps that you implement and then the examples of how to implement which is really common for this genre the call number here is 658.4038 and if you've watched my videos before you will know that I love a how to life book so I am keen to see what this guy clearly the guy um, has to say about getting stuff done will I actually get stuff done no <laughs> do I work in a high-powered job where I need this information no <laughs> do I love it yes next up is what i'm currently reading so it's got my cute little book actually i'll show you my bookmark this is from a podcast and it's also on youtube now called books unbound which i will link um they have a merch bookmark subscription service which has two bookmarks and two stickers every quarter i think and um it's just adorable i don't know where the other ones are in books i imagine anyway 
So I'm currently in the middle of make, sew and mend traditional techniques to sustainably maintain and refashion your clothes. This is from a YouTuber, Bernadette Banner, who does historical clothing recreation. I really like her channel. It's really chill vibes. It's inspired me to start making clothes, but I hate my sewing machine. I hate it so much. And Bernadette in particular hand sews a lot. It's, it's just a reference work about sewing. So it's got fabrics, what they're made of, what makes each type of fabric different, like the difference between cotton and wool and silk, uh, the different ways of doing a stitch, the tools that you might need for hand stitching, the different ways that you might do a seam. And I think in the back there's things like pockets and oh, smocking, that sort of thing, how to gather all hand stitching, not machine stitching. And while I know how to sew by hand and by machine, I'm finding this absolutely interesting. Um, it's a bit like reading a cookbook and you know the basics and you've done it before, but you're just leveling up your skills and that's what is happening here. But it's also a great read and it's definitely Bernadette's voice from her YouTube as well. So I can just hear her narrating it to me. The call number here is 646.6 .6. and the blurb on this one says, whether you are just getting started with sustainable fashion and need to alter your new secondhand finds or you want an introduction to sewing techniques for making your own clothes, Bernadette Banner's signature voice will guide you through all the traditional stitches and techniques you will need to extend the life of your favourite pieces and to take fashion into your own hands. Blah, blah, blah. Step-by-step -step photos and stuff like that. I actually bought it because she often talks about doing French seams. And I have no idea. I've watched the videos in slow-mo. I've read the French seams bit here. I don't understand how French seams work. And so... I'm going to have to try it myself, but I've got the I've got the step-by-step -step guide. I've just realized we're all accidentally non-fiction here, and this is another one. Uh, what if two additional serious scientific answers to absurd hypothetical questions by Randall Munro, who writes the XKCD comic, who wrote What If, which is on my shelf over there, and How To, which is on my shelf over there. Some of the questions here is hoping to cool the atmosphere by opening everyone's freezer door at the same time, Maybe it's time for a brief introduction to thermodynamics. Want to know what would happen if you rode a helicopter blade, built a billion story building, made a lava lamp out of lava, or jumped on a geyser as it erupted? Well, if you insist. So basically it's crazy questions and then goes about answering them scientifically um, with some of those examples on the back. It's got a bookmark in it because my husband's currently reading it. And I bought it because my kid literally just finished What If? And so I'm all for encouraging her reading and not that she needs much encouragement. And also um, she is encouraging me to buy books. Not that I need much encouragement. So win-win. The call number on this one, 502, which I'm pretty sure is just general science. I know that because I just prepared that video for filming. <laughs> and then we have some nonfiction. This is the last of the physical books that I've bought. Mary, Maggie O'Farrell, The Marriage Portrait, which was shortlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction in 2023, but I actually grabbed it because I really liked Hamnet. Even though I will link the video where I reviewed it, I had a lot of negative things to say. I really enjoyed it. So, <laughs> the blurb here. In the winter of 1561, Lucrezia, Duchess of Ferrara, is taken on an unexpected visit to a country villa by her husband, Alfonso. As they sit down to dinner, it occurs to her that their journey to this lonely place has a sinister purpose. He intends to kill her. Uh, and I've heard tell that this is actually Maggie O'Farrell's worst book. So uh, if it's good enough to be shortlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction and a Sunday Times and New York Times bestseller and a Guardian Book of the Year and a Reese's Book Club pick, it can't be that bad, right? We shall see. All right, that's all the physical books. And now Kindle, except I have a physical version to show you because I do own it in a physical copy. And then it was in the Kindle Daily Deal. And I suspect if I am going to read this one, it's going to be on my Kindle in the 10 minutes before I fall asleep. This is Neil Gaiman's Norse Mythology. Before the beginning, there was nothing. No earth, no heavens, no stars, no sky. 
Only the mist world, formless and shapeless, and the fire world, always burning. So this is just Neil Gaiman's take on Norse mythology. I, I've owned this for such a long time and have never opened it. So if I'm going to read it, it will be on that Kindle version. Also, is it just me or is Norse mythology a little bit boring? I think all mythology is a little bit boring. And is that because the stories are so familiar to sit down and read the original source is just eh? Or... I don't know but I've recently read a couple of books set in that northern European world historical fiction set in the northern European space so maybe it's time to get some foundational myths under my belt <clears throat> we shall see and that's also non-fiction the call number there is 293.13 maybe I'm just in the mood for learning and that's why I've accumulated all these non-fiction things because Sometimes I just go on a learning bender and then I go on a fill my brain with delicious Wheel of Time chocolate bender. Who knows? Last one for this video is also something I have in physical format and Kindle format and now audio format and that is Ulysses by James Joyce. Now I promised a viewer of this channel and friend uh, that I would attempt Ulysses this year. I read Bleak House last year which was this chunky and I'm glad that I did. So he advised me, my friend advised me that I should just let it wash over me and if I can attempt it with a strong Irish accent which I can't do. It's just not in my imagination but I found on Libro FM, a version narrated by somebody who has a strong Irish accent. So the plan is to listen to that and read along. It feels like homework, but I think it will be type too fun in which I will be, have, be glad to have finished it, even if the process isn't fun times. Speaking of Libro FM, uh, they just launched in Australia, which is excellent news because that's a viable alternative for audiobooks to Amazon and Audible. Having said that, I've been an Audible member for probably a decade at this point. And same with Amazon, it's not an ecosystem I'm getting away from. But Libro FM is just another option, which is nice to have. It has a subscription thing like Audible does where you pay for a credit and then you can get whatever book you like for that credit. And also if you become a subscribing member, a percentage of your subscription fee goes to support a bookshop who has signed up for the program. So in my case, the bookshop I have chosen is Beechworth Books, which is actually the closest one to me, but also a bookshop, an independent bookshop that I love to support when I am in Beechworth. It's about an hour away from me, hour's drive. Every time I go there, I like to buy a book just to make sure that the bookshop will still be there next time I go to that town. Now I can support them with Libro FM as well. And I think like it only just launched in Australia a week ago. So hopefully more bookshops will get on board there. And I'm going to leave a referral link below. If you sign up for a subscription, then I get a credit. That's how that works. If you don't want to sign up, literally nothing happens. And so I'm excited to give Libro FM a go. I don't know that the catalog is as extensive. There's definitely not the, the exclusives that Audible has. But Audible is also known for being a massive bully in the royalties space for authors, just like all streaming and subscription services. And so I'm willing to give Libro FM a go. So that's my modest haul for July. Which do you think I should bump up my TBR? Um, there's a lot of nonfiction in there and may maybe I should start reading it <laughs> now that I've accumulated. Who can say? Thank you for hanging out with me and I will see you in the next one. Bye.